Hi, Ryland. Hi. Hi, Mark. Welcome back. Yes, thank you for having me back. Nice to see you again. You as well. Who's your friend? So, this is my boyfriend, Isaac. Hey, Isaac. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, Mark. So, is, Isaac is not the kind of guy I would picture you with. No. Uh, at all. Not me either, <laughs> <laughs> I think. So, before we get into your relationship with Isaac, tell me what's going on in your life. Things have changed a bit for you, right? So, from the last time we talked, things have changed quite a lot, I would say. I would say last time we talked, I was more lost, and I didn't really understand life and what was really going on, I think, in my own head. I was very, very depressed, but I started not drifting away from doing my sex work and OnlyFans and all of that stuff, but I wanted to realize what makes me happy as a person, and I decided, like, I love art. I've been doing art since I was a kid and I was like I, I want a tattoo I want to be a tattoo artist like why can't I be a tattoo artist why not like I did art for so long I, I want to be a tattoo artist so I got my own machine from Amazon it was like a crappy little machine like I would say like six months ago now and I just started practicing on people and then I, I slowly just got pretty good at it and then now I'm in my own private tattoo studio and I tattoo full-time I mean, I still do OnlyFans and I cam now and stuff, but tattooing is like what I found makes my heart happy. That's wonderful. Yes. That's great. You certainly have a portfolio of work all over you. Yes, I got more since last time. What, what, have, what have you done since last time I saw you? Tattoos. Okay. Did you, somebody told me you slit your tongue down them. Oh, yeah. I didn't do that. Yeah, I didn't. My tongue was not split last time. So yeah, I got my tongue split. That was a big one. Like I can do a few tricks. I, so I did that, and wow. then eyes have been the same. And then I literally got these tattoos under my face like two two mm -hmm. months ago. I would say now it says life and death because I think those are the two most scariest things in the world. So I I just was like I really want that on my face, and I did it. You feel like. You have no regrets about doing any of this work. I have no regrets to this day still about anything I've done. Like everyone still says, you're going to regret this, you're going to regret this. I'm 23, about to be 24. I still don't regret anything I've ever done. And I just think even he's told me everything happens for a reason. Everything's mapped out for you in your life. Like everything that happens is supposed to happen. So, yeah, I can't look back because looking back is almost like regret. So... Yeah, no regrets for me. I think you probably enjoy breaking down people's um, assumptions about you. Oh, I love it. I, I love breaking it down when, you know, people say I don't have a mom, a dad, or a career. Like, you know, I'll pull them into cameras and be like, I'm literally normal. I have all my family. Everyone is in my life. I'm, I'm happy and I'm blessed to have a life I have. And I think... People are so focused on your visual yeah. treat. They don't want to look your, on the inside. Your appearance. But a friend of mine picked you up at the airport when you flew in from Houston. And yeah. she was telling me how you're, you're, the, you're the exact opposite of who you appear to be or who you would assume you would be. Exactly. Yeah. She said that. She was like, I, w I would expect a switch between y'all. Like, you would be the crazy <laughs> one and he would be like all tame. But no, it's. It's totally opposite. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a very sweet person, I think, once, yeah. once you get past the exterior. Yes, I think so. I was talking with Isaac before, you, we, before we started, and I, said, I asked him, like, so what do you see in Orylan? And, I, you know, so I'll ask you that again on camera. What, what, what is it you see in Orylan? I think the first thing truly was just, like, the individualism of her. I know it takes, like, a lot of confidence to change yourself like that. Um, and I just find it like beautiful because it's like one, it was like you had to put thought behind it. It couldn't just be done overnight. There's a lot of aftercare that goes on with like tattoos and the tongue splitting and stuff. So it's like a responsible thing that has to be done. So like when immediately when I first saw it, it was more of like I just got straight to the questions of like, what the fuck did you do? And then I think the conversation between us just went back and forth so naturally. Like she was answering the questions because she realized I was just curious. Where did you guys meet? Uh, we met at a bar uh, downtown. In Houston? Yeah, in downtown Houston. It just so happened to be like in the oldest elevator, uh, second oldest elevator in Texas. Yeah, 
they were doing like a comedy show or something and we were trying to sneak away from it and that was like the only area and they were in there at first and I just like slammed my way in and it was either deal with the comedy or forced that so I forced that <laughs> it's just so weird though because we weren't even supposed to meet like the only reason yeah. we met is because I was tattooing my friend and she was hungry and I was like let me finish your tattoo you can eat after she's like no come eat with me please and then we went to eat at this underground food hall place in downtown Houston. Mm. And then after that, she was like, can we go get a drink? And I was like, oh, I don't really want to, but we did. And it was the bar that he was in. And then she knew him and I didn't know that. Like they knew each other like mutually. And he just came in the elevator when we were sitting there and then we just stayed with each other all night and we haven't left each other's side since. And that was like six months ago. Six now. months ago. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I think Isaac sees through your exterior yeah. into who you really are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I even asked him last night, I was like, why do you love me? <laughs> like, <laughs> She's asked me a couple of times. Yeah. And I think every time it's just a little more reassurance that maybe she finds it hard to believe, but I don't really find it that hard to believe. I think it's like the same way that she said, like, if you looked at her, you would assume that she was some way. If you looked at me, you would assume I was some way, but they're actually quite flipped. Yeah. Like when she says she has her like she still has her family and stuff like that, you would assume she wouldn't, but on me, you might assume I did, which is opposite. Yeah. So I think like everything is kind of like a counterbalance. It's like, look, people look at you like this, but you have to understand there actually is people like this. So you can't really just come one way about it or be defensive or this or that. Like you have to be able to engulf everybody's point of view on it. How old are you, Isaac? I'm 30. You're 30? Mm -hmm. And you seem like a good Texas, pretty straight. <laughs> Born and raised, yes. Texas boy. But uh, you're, you're able to see past all the... Oh yeah, for sure. All for the, sure. Uh, visual stuff. And you know, some people are into that. Yeah. Is that your um, preference? I don't think it would be like a preference. I think anybody that I've ever dated before that had tattoos were more of like a normal tattoos, arms, legs, you know, chest areas. Um, but it's never been something like I've been like, oh, I only like tattooed girls, but like, I don't think it was anything other than just her, like just her being her, because I don't think anybody else could really pull it off. Right. No, when Ryland told me she had a boyfriend, I was picturing my <laughs> imagination was turning him into whatever I thought he would be. I didn't know if I would meet you or not. So when you walked in, I'm like, that's not, you look like my, bro my brother. You don't, <laughs> you don't look like what I would picture her with. Well. But I think it's beautiful because you guys see through the, who, you, who each other maybe really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like typically he wouldn't even be like my type. Like, he's really not, I've never dated a white guy in my life. <laughs> and then, oh, is that right? Yeah, I, I never have. It's usually like Hispanic men and stuff, but that was always, it was always toxic and not good for me. But like, he just had something about him and like, I, I just find him so attractive and not just attractive, just he's helped me so much mentally. Like when we met, I was still in my depression and I, I wasn't showering that much. I wasn't changing my clothes. I didn't care about anything. I just got into this really bad depression. And he like helped me get out of it. Is the depression subsided a bit since you've been with Isaac? I would say so. When we first started getting together, I was having bad panic attacks. Like we kind of never went through that like cute little puppy stage. It was kind of just like right forward and like we moved in together like month one. So it's like he kind of got all my bad sides at once, basically like, yeah, the first night was cute and fun and like we had so much fun, but then like the real thing set in and I would have panic attacks every day and I couldn't breathe and like he would have to be there and like I wouldn't care to shower, or change my clothes or anything. And then like he stepped in and helped with that. And then I got on medication and I, I take Zoloft and Klonopin for, the anxiety, I mean, it helps a little bit, but more so just him being with me and being my partner. And like, we have two dogs and two cats together. So it's like, we're like a family. Yeah. I think that's helped my depression so much. Like I lived in a, a big town home alone, just by myself. Like, what am I doing with my life? Like I'm alone. I have no one. Like, what is my life? Cause people, you know, think, oh, I'm a Rylan. I have this, I have that. But that's like far from the truth. Like I just sit at home with my cats. Like what are the, the biggest misconceptions people have about you? That I'm a drug addict, that I don't have a job, that I don't make any money, I don't have life, like I don't have, like, it's like all of them. That and you're a total freak. Yeah, that like, what what is wrong with her? And I'm like, 
what? Like, and it's just like the like people are like, imagine when you're like 50 or 60, and I'm like, okay, imagine when you're 50 or 60, we're both gonna be the same. I'm just gonna look cooler than you, you know? <laughs> like, it just frust- like we're in 2023. Like, it just frustrates me. Like, grow up. Like, how can't you see? Pa- like, it, I get so heated because it's just like, how can't you see past that? And it's like, you know, I started my own YouTube channel and everything, so it's like I get my word out there now like i i want to break down those stereotypes through that and realize like it's okay that you have tattoos piercings like it doesn't change the person you are i like the pictures last time that we saw of me with no tattoos i'm still that girl and even um the girl who picked us up she even said like you look like a little cheerleader girl like i see the girl that you used to be still even with all this Because as soon as I open my mouth and talk, like, people realize I'm not this crazy, (laughs) like, obnoxious drug addict or homeless or whatever. I'm, like, I'm I'm still that person. It's just this is what fulfills my life. Like, I had to do this to find me. That's interesting. So you've pulled back from stripping? Yeah, I I quit stripping uh, last year. There was just no money to be made in it anymore. Like literally I would go in and make fifty, sixty dollars and I had to cover up all my face tattoos still. And I was just like, This is not worth it. I'm not happy. I'm busting my knees up. Like I'm barely making two, three hundred dollars a night to get like groped by people and it's like a full nude club. So I was just like, I'm done with this. Like I have more respect for myself. And even this year, I thought about going back to the club, but I was like, No, I don't have to do that. I can push myself harder, like on doing my tattoos i'm you know going harder on my only fans pages and like i recently got into camming so only fans and camming is still sex work yeah it's still sex work how, how does that affect you emotionally me or him you oh um i i can imagine how it affects isaac yeah <laughs> it's just i it's not that i hate it i don't hate it um because without that i would not be where i am today like i'm already about to open a bigger tattoo studio because of that so i respect it do i want to do it forever no do i want to like coach people and help them and maybe doing that will help them get out of that situation into a better one of course like so my emotions with it i'm i'm content with it i'm not gonna say oh my god it's like i love doing this every day like no sex work is hard like it's mentally hard, but like, it's harder without a partner. Like when he stepped in the picture, it, it, it just helped it so much. Like he helps me with it even like, not, not in my videos or anything, but he just helps me on like my days that I'm like, I feel like I can't even do this work. And he just helps me realize like, it's gonna get us to a bigger picture one day and it's just gonna be better. So and, and, I, and Isaac, I feel- you work as well? Uh, yeah. What do you do? Uh, mainly right now art. Uh, just in different mediums of t-shirts, more cut and sew, taking things from like vintage shops and repurposing them to just give it a new life. And then they call it like upcycling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, in Houston, it's not such a big market. There's a lot of textile out there with the industry. It's just like a good thing to have going out there. Mm -hmm. And with OnlyFans, you have very little one-on-one with your audience, right? Mm, no. Or, I, or do you? No, I do. Uh, I, I, like everyone on there, it's almost like I have a little relationship with each person on my OnlyFans. Like nowadays, girls on their OnlyFans have bots and people that they don't even touch their OnlyFans. They pay people to manage their OnlyFans and they just make nude pictures and stuff. Like I don't do that. Like personally for me, that's wrong. I, I view this, even me as like, Like I'm a counselor in a way, and I'm helping people in a different type of way. So that's what makes me happy because there are people that have come and said, I'm not even looking at your page. I just, I've watched your YouTube videos and I just think you're an inspiring person. It'll tip me like a hundred dollars. Yeah, I would think you have a a large part of your audience that are just fascinated with who you are. Yeah, they are. Like they just like, they're just like, well, she doesn't have a GoFundMe or anything, this and that. Well, I'm gonna go support her her OnlyFans. And like, I I contact with them. Like I have conversations with them, long ones sometimes. It's like, you know, so it feels good in that aspect. Like to me, if I had like a bot doing it, I was just like, 
I'm not doing my job right. Like if I do a job, I want to do it good. Just how I'm tattooing. I started tattooing on a floor, like a dirty floor, just doing whatever. And now I'm in a really great studio. Like any job I do, I want to do it right. So yeah, I would say it is like pretty connecting, but no, I'm not like meeting up with anybody or doing any of that. But what I find most interesting about you is that you, you, who you are inside is almost the exact opposite of who you are on the outside. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. And even sometimes I question to myself, like, I really did this to myself. Like, why did I do this? <laughs> do you, do like, you have moments where you? Yeah, there's moments. Your sometimes judgment. I wake up and I'm like, God, my whole face your is tough. to do this. Yeah, I'm like, it's like not even a regret. It's just like almost a happiness of what I had to go through in life to learn things. Because I feel like if I didn't do this to myself, I wouldn't have learned things. Like I wouldn't have gotten in my journey to, to this. There's, I mean, living the, in that body. Yeah. The reaction you get from from outsiders, strangers, yeah. must be very unique. So what have you learned about human beings from Honestly, wearing this body? A lot of them, a lot of people are evil online, honestly. like through TikTok, I go live on a lot of things where I just like to talk and I like to tattoo people on my live streams. And it's like, I like to connect with people and people are like, oh my God, you're so ugly, you're disgusting. Like people are really evil. Like, but I bet they wouldn't say it to my face because I've really never had one person come up to me and like really just say you. I always get ugly stares, but I stare back. Like, I don't care. But a lot of people like do give positive feedback and they see me in person and they're like, oh my God, your tattoos are so cool. So a lot are sweet, but a lot of people are just really sad with themselves, I think. So they want to bring it out on me or they're mad that they can't do this and be successful like me. People get mad at what they don't understand, I think. Yep, I think you're exactly right there. And social media gives them a platform to just say whatever they want with no repercussions at all. No, every time they hate, I'm just like, I'm sorry you're having a bad day. Don't take it out on me. Like You're just looking at a mirror because I don't care. It doesn't affect me in any type of way. I'm still going to do this. Like. People hate on me. I still split my tongue. I still got tattoos on my cheeks. I don't care. I'm going to do what makes me happy. And those people that hate should do what makes them happy so they can stop hating on other people. What is going through your head when you're deciding to split your tongue or when you're deciding to get even more face tattoos or make your eyes black? It's like an urge. It's like this thing in my head. It's like, you know, people get a high for drugs. That's not where I find it. I really, I don't do any drugs or anything like that. So I feel I get my fix or my my next step in life almost it's like every tattoo or everything i get is like the next step in life for me so it's like the tongue was like i can't have a normal tongue anymore it, it, it just popped into my head i was like my tongue has to be split like i really just saw that in my head or, or i can't keep going forward with does, my does life it, does it impede your ability to eat food or talk not at all it at first it was so bad it was the most painful <laughs> thing i ever did in my life i regret it like it, i regret that like I regret the pain of it it was the worst pain I've never I didn't sleep for four days I couldn't eat for like five six days um I had stitches in my tongue like the top of my tongue was rotting off like I I like the journey of it I guess so like sometimes pain is therapy yeah what do you make of all that it's wild um that's just like a personal thing like she said like that's something that she couldn't move forward with. And then that's all I have to know about anything about it. It's like, if that's what she needed, then that's what she needed. And it doesn't do, it, like you said, it doesn't change how I eat. It doesn't change how my tongue feels. So I, I don't give a shit what she does with her tongue. But if it makes her feel more like her, then I'm like right there behind it. Yeah. And it's like, I still have body dysmorphia. Like I just got my It's breast. weird though. Yeah, like, I got the my... way that it moves is weird. Yeah, it is. Like sometimes you'll see it like, she has control of it. Yeah, it's like normal people, when they lick their lips, they go from like one side to the other. Like she'll start from the middle and it's like windshield wipers that like have like- Cause I can't through. do it all once, I'm just- It's like really like a chameleon. You wouldn't think that when you split a tongue, like it really gets like that motion. Like you think it'd be kind of dead and numb, but like, it's weird. Do you enjoy it can pick stuff people? up. Yeah, do you, do you I do. <laughs> I, I, like now people are like, oh my God, your eyes. And I'm like, oh yeah. And then I just like do this with my tongue and they're like, they freak out even more. I'm just like, yeah. They can taste differently. Yeah. Like, if I have a Coke and a Sprite, I can taste both of them at the same time. Like blindfolded, she can let you know yeah. which side the Coke is on. Yeah. What do children think of you? Oof. Small children. 
there are some small children that are like, oh my god, Bonnie is superhero. And then there are some that are like, <laughs> kind of start crying, like speed off, <laughs> start crying, just staring at me heavy. Like, but oh. they're kids. Yeah, it doesn't phase me. I still have like body dysmorphia though, in a sense, I guess. Um, like I got my boobs bigger recently uh, and then I'm getting liposuction in like six days. So it's like, yes, the tattoos made me happy, but I'm, I want to be happier with my full appearance because I feel like when I'm at my full potential and I'm happiest with myself, then I'll just really flourish even more. So the tattoos make me happy and stuff, but you know, I still have problems on the inside I have to fix. Like it's, it's like a bandage almost. It's just, it doesn't fix what's inside, but it helps me move on in life and keep going with, okay, I did this. Now I have to keep going. What's the next thing? What are your goals long-term? Long-term, it's like, I feel like I really didn't know at first, but now it's like, I have all these ideas in my head. Like we want to own, well, we're already working on it, but uh, getting a huge studio, he's going to put his clothing brand inside of it. Um, I'm going to own half of it and it's going to be a tattoo shop. So we want to have a clothing studio and a tattoo shop and I'm going to have a bunch of artists in there. And then we want to expand that and maybe get a tattoo shop in Colorado and keep going with that. Maybe Airbnbs. We're already like just thinking of all these, like he's so smart with this stuff. Like I wouldn't have thought of half of this, of these things. So like, that's where the goal is now. We want to own like a bunch of rental properties and the goal is to get a house this year, hopefully for ourselves. And yeah, just keep going with our lives and seeing where it takes us. But that's kind of where it is right now. Like the goal is owning a tattoo like shop that we can rent out to other people. Do you have to deal with sometimes scaring people that you come like let's say you're renting out a room mm -hmm. to somebody through an airbnb and they meet you some people are going to be freaked out that's what i'm for yeah that's what he's for he's Here's the free face <laughs> yeah because i mean even at that like you know when renting or buying a house or anything people just assume i don't have money i don't have anything that's like i don't care about money money doesn't make me happy sure i have some money but that doesn't matter and it shouldn't define a person and it's just like people just automatically assume I have nothing and this and that so it's like people don't think I could buy a house so it's like it's kind of scary sometimes like that I could get rejected even though I have the money just because the way I look because they can't trust me per se like you know so that's like the only downfall I think that's why he's here he's got the pretty face for it yeah but this all started with just the common understanding that she obviously doesn't want to do sex work forever. So then we just started pulling out what would make her happy forever if she was doing that as work. Mm -hmm. and the tattoos would make her happy, traveling would make her happy. So we've just been piddling around with ideas of like, what can you do and still move around and still make your money and still do this and be able to kind of get away from the sex work completely. Because like she said, even though it is beneficial for her in some ways, it is also takes a toll on her in a lot of other How ways. How do you feel about it? Um, it kind of, it doesn't really, like, I guess it's just like the, my personality. It's like whenever we met, I think if she would have acted more, what's the word, like flamboyant about it and just been like, I'm an OnlyFans, this and that and that and that, like it would have kind of turned me off to it. But like the conversation we were having about like tattoos and this kind of stuff, like after that first initial conversation, it didn't really matter what she did. So... Obviously, like when we got into it, it was something that we had to talk about. And it was like, how do you feel about this or how do you feel about this? And I don't think she's ever had anybody that was understanding of her situation. So it's like we do things together. We talk about things together. Like we've dedicated areas in our house to that specific. So if yeah. you're going to be doing this, like I'll leave you alone and like I don't have to know about it. We'll never have to see that, you know. Um, but then I also help her out with things like setting up, you know, photo shoots or different kind of things for like this, for helping with promotion, uh, mm -hmm. just to help her to get out of the OnlyFans bubble because that's initially what she wants yeah. to do. You're not having actual contact with guys? No, uh, I- It's just through the yeah, internet I, I, I've even told guys, you know, like I, I can't do it. I've realized, I started meditating also, and he's been such a support. He built me like a meditation room and a sex work room for, so I need, I started meditating and it helped change a lot of things. And then, you know, 
he built that, like, he's so supportive, he built that room for me. Like, to, like, and he knows what I'm doing down there. He knows I'm FaceTiming guys. Like, he knows what I'm doing. He knows I'm playing with myself on a camera. And he's still supportive in there for me. A lot of people wouldn't be, you know? So there's no contact with guys, but a lot of guys don't even need that. I realize that. They just need someone to talk to. Like, really. <laughs> like, it's like I'm a counselor sometimes. Like, they just want someone to talk to. Like, even a guy came on my cam soda thing one day when I was streaming and he just wanted a tattoo for me and he didn't know how, where my stuff was. He, I just popped up on the page and then he just wanted to get a tattoo for me. Like some people don't even care about that stuff because people really just hear me talk even on YouTube and they like not fall in love with me, but just the aspect of who I am and like, dang, I would really like to talk to her. So it's like, they don't, if they respect me, they would realize I don't need to meet up with someone for four or $500, you know, like, not knocking that because that's what I did in my old life. But it's just like to move on, I can't have those energies in me anymore. Like every time you're with someone, you're putting your energy into them. And I used to not really realize that and wondered why I was so messed up in the head when I was like, you know, basically prostituting myself and wondering why I'm so messed up when I was letting all these energies enter me. And yeah, when I, when I stopped that, it kind of just like flourished and it's just my head's more clear now of what I want to do with my life, you know. Maybe I'll do OnlyFans for another, like, three, four years. I won't be mad about it if it gets us to my goals and our dreams, what we want in life. But no, I'm not going to. I don't want to be doing it at 40, 50 years old. <laughs> we want, we want like, five tattoo studios, like, throughout the country. Like, maybe even more. Like, the, the possibilities are endless. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Now, Ryland, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned from this life with all your tattoos and piercings? And Maybe it's changed since the last time we talked, but I would just say just make sure you're happy. No matter what you're doing, make sure you're doing it and you're happy with yourself and you love yourself. Like, you need to have self-love to live in this life. I, I, don't, I don't know how people maneuver without it. Cause I remember when that was me and I would just say, love yourself and love others. Like I still haven't changed my motto. I say peace and love every time I can, cause that's what the world should be. So that's just kind of how I view things. Like everyone just should just be good to each other. Like my life lesson is just be kind, like literally just be kind to people, be kind to yourself. That's the most important thing. All right, All right Ryland, Isaac, thank you so much for oh, man. Thank you. talking thank to me. You, and, Mark. Uh, Good luck with everything you guys are doing. Thank you. Thanks.